So let, let's first talk about microgravity or zero G. And, and this is probably a example of it that people don't realize. Yes, so generally speaking, when an astronaut gets back from a year on the International Space Station, they are pretty weak. Yeah. They have to be carried out of their spacecraft and put in reclining chairs. Wrapped They're wrapped in blankets. In blankets. Uh, and if, if you even look, they always look a little bit pale and white and sickly. They actually aren't feeling that great. Yes. Um, so there's an immediate reaction yeah. when you get into space, which the astronauts call the puffy face and bird leg syndrome. Yes. So here are three astronauts pre on Earth, pre-flight, and here are the same three astronauts. Uh, and you can look at their faces. And you can definitely start to see that, in, especially in like the cheeks and in particular uh, towards the head, they actually have larger heads. And they're also, this isn't a color of the uh, issue with the color of the photo, they're a little bit redder, right? It's like their head is a bit more strained with the blood vessels. And what's happening is that we are suffering under this intense gravity and the gravity is trying to pour all the blood right. down into our legs. That's right. It's trying really hard. I mean, we've got you know, 50 kilograms of blood in a typical person. That's yep. a lot of weight pulling downwards. That's right. And what you actually got is elastic in your legs, in your veins, that stop all the blood pooling down and yep. push upwards so that some of it remains in your head. That's right. Um, but then, of course, when you're in space, that elastic then shrinks these things down and Puffy goes the face and bird go the legs. That's right. And then as time goes on, your body then starts losing blood. It doesn't need so much because you exactly. don't need to fill up the legs so much. That's right. And so typically after they've been a few months in space, the volume of blood has gone down. Yep. And it's spending much more time on the top of your body and less in the bottom of your body. And this can then have flow on effects to your heart, which doesn't have to work so hard. That's right. In, in fact, the heart is, you know, it's just a muscle and pump and now says, I could take a little bit of a break. I don't have to pump as much in space. But then when you get back yes. down to Earth, suddenly the, your reduced amount of blood will flow back into your legs, leaving none for your brain. Ooh. That's right. And you get fainting astronaut syndrome. Yeah, and, and this has happened a number of times and why those astronauts are sitting when they're coming back. So the basic problem is that space is actually too easy on the yeah. human body. On Earth, we don't realize <laughs> that we're fighting gravity every yeah. inch of the way. It's trying to pull the blood out of our system every time we get out of bed in the morning, every time we take a step, there are shock waves running up and down our body. Um, I mean, you think about bench pressing, if you're bench pressing at 50 kilograms, that's a lot. That's right. And you're doing that every time you get out of a chair. And all of a sudden that, 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 that burden of earth has been taken away. That's right. So we've seen how it affects the blood, but it affects every part of your yeah, body. You don't does. need so many muscles. You don't need such strong bones. You don't need such strong connective tissue like cartilage. Yeah. All these things are not needed in space. Yeah. And the body, um, being a parsimonious thing it is, thinks if I don't need this, we might phase it out. And, and so, you know, and, and it creates this litany of problems and, you know, even bones with that blood, you may think, well, okay, they just get faint. But they also then get a buildup of blood in their brain, which can create clots and all sorts of other things. Yes, yeah, so perhaps the most dangerous thing is the effect on the bones. Yeah. Um, that if you use it or lose it, you're not using them because you don't, not fighting all the That's force right. of gravity. And so it turns out a typical person loses one to one and a half percent of their bone density for every month in space. And, it, this is actually a lot, right? You know, you, you can age almost years worth of bone density loss just going up in a space for a year. Uh, similar to osteoporosis yeah, yeah, that yeah. elderly people get. And it's not just that the bones get weak so they might snap when you come That's back. Right. All that calcium has to go somewhere and it's flowing around your bloodstream. That's right. And it can then form gallstones or kidney stones. So it not only has one problem that it creates, it creates other problems downstream. Now on Earth, of course, it's fairly easy to go into surgery and have your gallstones or kidney stones removed. Not a bit harder on the International Space Station and even harder if you're halfway to Mars. That's right. And, you know, same with even breaking a leg or an arm or a hip. Okay, yes, it may be a bit traumatic, but you can get a surgeon, get a cast. Not as easy to do that in space. You might be okay with your weak bones while you're on the mission to Mars, but then you're going to land. Yes, and, and walk around. Yes, um, luckily Mars has less gravity, so maybe you can survive with 30% weaker bones because it's one uh, third uh, the gravity. But, but you're still also going to have to come back to Earth at some point. So, so what are you going to do about it? Yeah. Well, clearly you want to make life harder for your body. Yeah. Get, so you need to exercise. This is quite hard in space, like you can't jog. <laughs> Um, well, they can. They have a running meal in the space station. It has to be have shock absorbers, otherwise the entire space station is going to... Yeah, it'd be funny that if you realise jogging would cause the space station to shake and actually move its orbit, but... And they have to have uh, elastic to hold them down, because otherwise they just drift away. You can't run without it. So you need to have enough resistance that you actually do something, but set up in such a way that that resistance doesn't create a problem on the International Space Station and the spacecraft. Yeah, so it's it's quite hard. Yeah. But some they certainly do a lot of exercise That's in space, right. and it's got to be 
weights and sh shocks yeah. to try and simulate the sort of loads your body is under on yeah. Earth. It, yeah, it's, it's not really to stay fit. It is just to mimic your conditions on Earth so your body doesn't essentially get too lazy. It's to match the level you just get walking around on Earth. Yeah. Um, and diet can help a lot. A lot of That's research right. has been done on which diets will try and yes. keep the calcium level in your bloodstream at the right level and try and stop osteoporosis and all the other various problems, keep your heart working properly. So, I mean, this is what they do now, though. Are, are there any better solutions? Well, the better solution would be to have artificial gravity. Yeah. Now, we, don't, we can't warp the laws of physics to create artificial gravity, but you could spin your spacecraft. That's right. And the centrifugal force will impersonate force. gravity. That's right, exactly. Um, a lot of spacecraft models of ideas that have rings like this that can spin around. Okay. The trouble is NASA did a whole bunch of experiments back in the 60s and 70s. Uh, what they actually do is have people lying in beds yep. and they very slowly rotate the bed. And what they discovered is if you're rotating it more than roughly once every minute or so, you're feeling nauseous all the time. So you're back to that. And this doesn't go yeah, away yeah, after yeah. two or three days. Okay. So you go back to that sickness thing, but it doesn't go away. So you can get some form of gravity, but you have to spin slowly to form it. So in order to spin slower, you have to make this bigger? Well, I mean, to get enough gravity, you either spin fast or you make something big. Yep. You need enough gravity to stop yourself from wasting away. Yep. And you can't spin fast, because so, that would make yeah. you nauseous the whole time. So you're pretty restricted to spinning slowly and it being big. Okay. So at some point in the future, you might get like in the opening sequences of New 2001, yes. these giant rotating spacecraft. It's not being built anytime soon. But what you might get in the near future is a counterweight in a spacecraft at the end of a rope okay. spinning around their common centre of mass. So essentially you just use this one as an anchor to kind of keep you spinning yeah. at a slow and steady speed to simulate that gravity. So you're not feeling too nauseous and it gives you... I don't know, maybe a third of gravi Earth gravity or yeah, something like even, that. Yeah, even if you get knocked out 1% or 1 gravity, but, you know, half or something like that, it does the job.